Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Tuesday, June 6, 2023. And today I'm talking about erectile dysfunction and long COVID. Now, June is Men's Health Month, and I'll be posting some videos on men's health topics throughout the month of June. But today I'm discussing uh, long COVID manifestations of erectile dysfunction, commonly referred to as ED. Now, you may recall that the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, listed 12 symptoms frequently seen in long COVID and issues with sexual desire or capacity was one of them. Now, there have been multiple published studies from around the world that have confirmed the issue of ED following COVID infection. So how common is it, folks? Well, it depends on who you read. Um, according to one online source, there's a 20% increase in the incidence of erectile dysfunction in men who have had COVID compared to those who haven't. And in one of the studies that I'm going to report on was published by the university uh, researchers in Thailand in October 22. They followed 153 male patients hospitalized with COVID who reported being sexually active prior to their COVID infection. Now, these researchers found the prevalence of erectile dysfunction at three months post-COVID to be as high as 50%. Now, their predicting factors for persistent ED were men who were over the age of 40 years of age and a diagnosis of major depression during their acute infection. So how does COVID cause erectile dysfunction? Well, a number of biological pathways exist, and I'm going to try to oversimplify this. But recall that the SARS-CoV-2 virus binds to the cell through the ACE2 receptor. We call it the ACE2 receptor. Well, it turns out male reproductive organs have high uh, expression of this ACE2 receptors, and specifically the cells that are involved in sperm and semen production are rich in these receptors, as well as the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels that are involved in erectile functions. Other pathways may relate to inflammation responses from the infection, and some studies suggest that the virus may persist in male reproductive cells long after the infection has clinically subsided. Now, researchers also say there could be psychological contributing factors because COVID can cause a loss of income, it can cause job loss, there can be financial burdens, in addition to sleep problems, anxiety, and depression, which can occur post-COVID in anybody, and it can contribute to ED. So it's well known that men can be reluctant to discuss ED. Now, I am not a urologist, but I will suggest seeing one if you have persistent ED following COVID. For some men, the problem resolves in a few weeks to a few months. Others, it can last much longer. Now, urologists say that the treatment for ED caused by COVID is the same as other types of ED treatment options. So please see a urologist. That is my message today. As always, be well and take care, folks.